For basketball, yes. For football, no. You know, you always see, oh, Alabama gets the number one recruiting class. Clemson gets the number one. USC, top five. Blah, 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 blah. But now we got a guy, a head coach in Sean Lewis. Who hustling. That ain't, me- that ain't messing around. He hustling. And I'm telling you this. San Diego State will never be a top 10 recruiting class because they're not a power no. five conference. That's just not going to no. happen. But according to rivals, the Aztecs got the number one class in the Mountain West. Nice. They got 26 total recruits, 15 uh, freshmen, 11 transfers, one four-star recruit, uh, two quarterbacks. But yeah, Browner, the Aztecs, Sean Lewis coming through with the number one recruiting class. In three weeks, he came in here and got the number one recruiting class of all the Mountain West. If you the, the number one thing you want for a new coach right off the bat is that. You want to see his ability to be able to recruit immediately because I think this is where Sean Lewis coming from Colorado will have the biggest impact on San Diego State because he just left recruiting these high-level kids. He just finished being in the living room of a lot of these players, and they still recognize him. So Mm -hmm. for him to go into these homes now and say, hey, man, I'm the head coach, I'm telling you, you're playing here. Whether or not you play there is up in the air. You're playing here. And if you want to come here and use this as a year to then transfer out or two years and transfer out to a bigger conference, put put plays on tape. Put downs on tape. Okay? Put your game on tape so then we can ha- – you build a name for yourself here and you'll be able to go somewhere else and, and then mm-hmm. build a bigger name, build your draft stock. Him being able to get two quarterbacks. Two. 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 Immediately a transfer from Florida State. Immediately and a top recruit out of Indi- Indiana. For him so, to get this done immediately is a huge, huge, huge point of encouragement for the program going forward. Again, you're not expecting them to, you know, make the top 10 next year, but you are no. expecting them to look to be watchable. And that's all we're asking for. Just yeah. entertain us from a college football perspective. I found it very, very, very fascinating during this whole three-week recruiting where these these kids were coming to visit. Um, I would drive by Snapdragon and I would see like the lights be on, and I was like, "What's going on at, at, weird at times, Snapdragon?" Right? Yeah, like at weird times. Yeah, dude. So they used Snapdragon as a parking lot for like exotic automobiles for these recruits to come and like get in full uniform, snap pictures in badass cars, and just literally. Recruit and recruit like modern wise. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Like, it was a very youthful recruiting pitch. And Dude. they asked, they asked Sean, um, you know, like, why did you find it necessary to do all these like pitches with cars, cool cars, and, and stuff like that? And he was like, uh, because they're kids. Because every single one of them carries this in their hand, and it's a free way for us to get to them and and to build that relationship and to tell our story, right? I I think so much of what we need to do through this recruiting process is to educate, right, and and to present who we are. So those things and the tools of, of social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, what have you. And then when we get the opportunity to get these families to our campus, again, to to showcase the unique story that we have to tell, the unique offering that only we can give, we're going to utilize all the tools at our disposal to be able to do that. Another thing he's doing, by the way, (laughs) the more I hear from him, the more I like him. The more I see him talk, the more I like him. The more I watch him, his body language, his energy, he, he gives off the feeling of being able to command a room. Yeah. And that's going to be, and, and not through fear, but just through respect and energy, getting guys focused. So again, they played zero games. Mm-hmm. What I have seen, I like. And that's all you can ask for right now. Right. Obviously, the on-field stuff is the on-field stuff. That's a whole separate thing. But I will say this, and this is not a dig at Rocky Long. This is not a dig at Brady Hoke. I will say this. The vibe is different. The vibe yes. is youthful. The energy is palpable. The the path is is now looking upwards as opposed to it, it was almost in flux under Brady there. And I don't know if the and this is like I said, this is not a dig at Brady. College football has changed 
significantly in the last four to five years. It has changed like crazy. And I don't know if this, the whole recruiting thing was over Brady's head, but it just didn't look like there was on the up and up. Obviously, on the field, it was very clear that it wasn't on the up and up. It was one of the worst seasons in, in, in recent memory, if not the worst in the last 15 years. Right. And with Sean, what it looks like with, with Sean is he gets recruiting, modern day recruiting. He gets what you need. He even said it himself. If you don't have a good quarterback, you don't have a program. Like, you just don't. And that's just a fact. So I, I think what he's done, and 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 listen, like I said, I don't pay attention to recruiting, but I do know what's happening here in San Diego State is it's very, very good for the Aztec football program. That's the vibe I'm getting. In the perfect world, in the perfect Aztec world, this hire turns them into Texas Tech. We get quarterbacks in the NFL. We get big statistics. We get big yards. And offensively, we will have guys coming in here because we're going to start producing next-level results. And by next level, I mean getting guys drafted. And I think that's going to be a big picture. I think that is the dream scenario where you can have – like. Texas Tech doesn't have some rich college football history. They got Patrick Mahomes, they had mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield. I think they had Kyle, was it Kyler Murray? Or it was it was somebody else. Whoever but, was Michael Crabtree's quarterback. Yes. Yeah. So they, they they Michael Crabtree. They have guys who you can identify that have mm-hmm. made it to the next level through that program, and I hope that Sean Lewis offensively can begin to do that and put his stamp on this team. Because te- Texas Tech, they sell out their stadium because they have an entertaining brand of football. Just, do people take them seriously on a national level? Not really. Mm-hmm. But if mm-hmm. they're on TV, you go, who's the quarterback there now? Yeah. yeah. And like I said, with the with the realignment and all the big dogs going to either the Big Ten, the SEC, or the Big 12, or I guess the ACC, but whatever, we all know how that looks now. Uh, but I the, that good. realignment, the expanded playoff, there's absolutely no reason that if San Diego State goes undefeated or maybe one loss, there's no reason up. that they can't be in the playoff, at least in the conversation. So Just, with that new format, it, mm-hmm. that's all they can ask for. Be the best. And this sucks. This is not what people wanted, but at, that's what that's our reality. Be the best pa- group of five school in the country. Be the is best. It? And that is not that is not. A a long shot, you know, with the resources they have here, with the campus they have, the location of where they are, the recruiting bed of where they are. You know, I think he said, like, I want to say, I don't remember the exact number, but a bunch of these kids are from California, three of them from San Diego. And would you always say, you got to keep your own guys. You got to keep your own guys. That's my number one thing. And you're not going to ever keep the number one quarterback that's going to go to Alabama. You're never going to keep those guys. But there's other guys here that will do very well. Here's the thing about this now, the, the time and age in which we live in. 20 years ago, the kid who would have left here and went to Alabama, he's not coming back here in a year. Mm-hmm. The way that things go now, the kid you that goes know. to Alabama is the number one quarterback in the country, and San Diego State was on his list just out of respect for the school. But then you get a new coach, you go to Alabama, your third string, you set the yep. whole year, and now you watch watching Sean Lewis and his offense light it up. And yep. now you go, so- well... Yeah, and this is another thing. So, Browner, all these recruits, probably a lot of nameless, faceless players that no one has ever seen or, or really paid attention to. You just see a right. recruit, you see his size, and you see his star, and you see That's his it. stats, and you're like, great. But there is one kid that Sean Lewis poached from Dion, and that we all seen on one of the most watched games this year. And that player is the tight end of Colorado, Michael Harrison. Do you remember the game-winning touchdown against Colorado State in the second overtime? The tight end that caught it? Guess which school he's going to now. He has left Colorado, and he's one of the guys that Sean Lewis is bringing with him. Michael Harrison is coming to San Diego State. You see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Show, bring me some people who I seen do stuff. Mm-hmm. Bring me some kids who showed up big at big moments. Now he he will be the feature tight end when he comes here. So it, again, 
this is this is just an example of like you said, bringing people here who you know, bringing people here you've seen do things. So I, like I, said, I like everything I've seen from him. I love the fact that he's already got two quarterbacks. When last year, again, we were using a, a defensive player as a quarterback. There's been so there've been so many instant changes, small but instant changes since he's gotten here. I mean, when was the last time they were number one in the Mountain West in recruiting? I, there was a date, and I've, I I forgot it. I can look it up, but there was definitely a. It's been a very long time, a very long time. So good. I'm. I, I'm yeah. I like it. I like it. Um. Yeah. Another service has them as the second. Like Rivals.com has them first. Twenty four seven Sports has them, uh, second behind Colorado State. But even then, that that seems to that would still be that's still very impressive.